I recently reached out to fellow maker and self-proclaimed geek Brian Thompson over at the Smuggler's Room about working on a project together. We're fans of each other's work and we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to build something out of nothing. You mean make something? Out of nothing. I thought we talked about this. We started discussing what we could collaborate on and in the process I found out that Brian was working on a canteen of beer tap for the Smuggler's Room. And Derek's been looking for a lighted display for an IG-88 droid head that he's building. So we decided that I would make the droid heads for each of us in two different styles. And I would handle the lighted display stand and the beer tap design. I better get started. Building something out of nothing. Damn it, Brian. You said you wouldn't do your catchphrase. Since we all know that buying droids from Jawas is bad news, I found an awesome 3D model online and got down to printing, sanding, and priming until the surface was ready for paint. Since Brian was looking for a really rusty, weathered version like you'd see around parts of Galaxy's Edge, I went with some of my favorite tricks, starting with Super 77 spray adhesive. This is an easy way to create a good amount of texture that isn't too chunky. Plus the adhesive allows you a way to apply additional layers of weathering like sawdust, or in this case, powdered wood putty. You can apply this any way you'd like, and as much as you'd like, building up layer after layer of spray adhesive and wood putty until you're happy with the appearance. Then set it aside to dry. Once everything's dry to the touch, it's time to lay down a base coat of gloss black spray paint. The gloss black helps give our chrome paint layer a better reflectivity, although for this version it's not as important since I'll be weathering it to look like it's been left out in the deserts of Tatooine. With our glossy black layer dry, I'm going to switch over to my airbrush and some Allclad 2 chrome lacquer paint. The metal flakes in this paint are suspended in lacquers, so be sure to really shake it before use. Keep your airbrush moving and use a Lazy Susan to help rotate your piece until you've got good coverage. If you're shooting for a really weathered droid like I am, it's alright to have some blotchy areas. It'll help make the piece look more aged. Lacquers dry pretty fast, so after just a few minutes, I'm able to start with the weathering. To really get this looking right, it's going to be important to layer the paints. So often we have a tendency to go heavy right off the bat, but to really get a realistic look, it's important to add layer upon layer of paint until you've built up to the final look. I started with pure black that's been thinned out with some glass cleaner. You could also do this with water, but I found that glass cleaner thins the acrylics more evenly without clumps. I'm applying the paint to all the recesses and then wiping the paint away with a damp rag. If your paint is too heavy, you can spray the surface of your droid with the glass cleaner to help wipe away the excess. Once I've got all the hard to reach areas taken care of, I'm going to switch to dabbing paint along the surface and then spraying it down to get the paint to run more naturally, blotting up any paint that's too heavy or looks unnatural. This step is totally up to you and the degree of age you're looking for. Just keep in mind that we'll be adding other colors. Now that I've got my darkest paint layer down, I'm going to switch to a medium brown paint 
and I'm going to apply it using the same technique. Dabbing paint across the surface and blotting up any excess. Then repeating until I'm happy with how it looks. The final bit of weathering will be some rust. Since there's already a ton of texture, I don't need to use any of the rust techniques from my other videos. So I'll mix up some orange and yellow acrylic paint to a bright rust color, and we'll dab it into the areas where rust might accumulate, wiping away any of the excess. This is definitely a case of less is more. If there's any areas that don't look quite right, go back and add in more layers of weathering until it looks right to you and then set it aside to dry. Now that I have Brian's beer tap droid squared away, it's time for me to start on my recently deactivated droid head. I'm going to start again with the spray adhesive since it's a nice soft texture that gives a real used universe look without being too grunged up. Then it's on to gloss black spray paint. For this version, since I want more of the chrome shine, I'm applying a light dust pass of paint and then a much heavier wet pass being sure not to go too heavy and cause drips. Once it's dry, we're going on to applying the chrome paint. You'll notice that it's much shinier than the first version. That extra time spent on the wet coat of spray paint really makes all the difference. Now we can move on to weathering, which will be much less severe for this version. To start, I'm going to thin down a medium brown acrylic paint with glass cleaner, and with the airbrush at about 15 psi, I'm going to apply paint along any horizontal lines in the model to create a slightly greasy look. I've got a wet rag handy to break up any areas of paint that look too heavy, and we'll go around the entire piece, hitting any areas that look like they could have some buildup. When I'm happy with the look, I'll set aside the airbrush and we'll switch to a can of matte black spray paint, which I'll use to dust over the entire surface. This will help to dull down some of the chrome paint while giving it a mottled look. You want to be at least 18 to 24 inches away from your piece and be sure to apply from different angles.
The last thing to do is add a touch of rust with some burnt sienna paint. This should be really subtle. You'll definitely remove more paint than you leave on. And with that, they're done. I boxed them both up and shipped them off to Brian for him to do what he does best. So be sure to head over to his channel to see how he completes the project. And as always, go make something out of nothing.